Welcome to Mental Wealth, the podcast to invest in your mind. Here I will help you make sense of your mind and behaviours, giving you the tools to have your best life. There is so much to share, so let's get into this episode and explore another great topic. Welcome to episode 35. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about self-love. In society, self-love is often associated with being in a relationship. But I want us today to really think about what self-love is. It's not just going and buying a new dress or a beauty treatment. It's deeper than that. And I have got a very special guest who is perfect to come and share this space with me. So I would like to welcome to this episode, Fleur. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Tell everyone a little bit about who you are, Fleur. Hi. Well, yes, I'm um, a nature connection coach. So I um, offer various different practices which have the um, commonality that they're all nature based. So um, I'm a nature based therapist, an eco therapist. Um, so I work with clients one to one. Um, I'm a coach and I offer uh, nature wellness retreats with my husband, Pete. And I also do um, forest bathing walks um, locally for the community. And I'm an Ikanidra meditation teacher. So Ikanidra is a really deeply relaxing meditation that brings together forest therapy, forest bathing, and the more traditional yoga nidra. So that's what I do in the in the world. My purpose, my sole purpose, is to bring people back to nature, to themselves, to nature, to their own inner nature, and yeah, to to love themselves again. So very apt for this episode. Exactly. That's why when I met you at a networking event, I thought you would be perfect for this topic. And it, as it is coming out on Valentine's Day. We want to change up, Fleur and I have said, we want to change up the conversation around love. Um, and as as we've said, bring in that kind of self-love. What does it actually mean? How do we have more? What do we need to look at? And we're going to be talking about boundaries. We're going to be talking about understanding what gets in our way. And then hopefully lots of really practical takeaway tips that we can uh, share with you all today. And I think one of the things that I think is really interesting about almost your introduction, Fleur, is that you have brought something that is has been available to us all f- forever. But actually the fact that there is somebody who is trained and who offers this as a as a business tells us, doesn't it, that there's something so much more powerful that we probably aren't tapping into, even though it's all out there for us. And I'd love you to tell us a little bit more about kind of what that means to you and how does that connect for others? Yeah, so I have uh, loved nature all the way through my childhood. Um, it was really there for me um, yeah, throughout my life as a way of kind of a place to go when I could be myself. Um, sometimes when I was growing up, I, I didn't always feel seen, uh, the middle child syndrome, uh, one of three. And we were really lucky where we lived. Um, there was uh, some beautiful fields down at the bottom of our road. So, uh, and I was brought up on reading Amy Blyton and Secret Seven books. So going into these fields uh, by myself, sitting under a tree, climbing a tree, just being in nature all the time was a, was a real source of solace for me. And um, yeah, so it was really kind of, it's been a, a part of my DNA as it is for everybody I think sometimes you know we often um, when we go for a walk we realize and remember just how beautiful nature is how much uh, it supports our mental health our emotional health our spiritual health and our physical health and we we kind of reconnected with nature again didn't we during lockdown in those that, that vital one hour where we were allowed to go for a walk and people suddenly realised there was all these beautiful trails on their doorstep and remembered again that, oh, actually, yeah, this is really good for me. And sometimes when I um, you know put on social media that I've got a forest bathing walk, a three-hour session, um, 
in the diary, you know, somebody will will always comment underneath, um, well, what do I need that for? You know, I can take myself out for free, but, you know, on my own. And that's uh, brilliant. You know, going out in nature on your own is, is awesome. And I'd highly recommend to do that. But so often I see people walking really fast. They're on a mission to get the dog walked. Sometimes, you know, people have got headphones in. It's a nice way to listen to a podcast, isn't it, while you're walking. But actually we're missing what nature is offering us, which is this beautiful connection where, you know, when we return from spending time in nature, you know, we can feel that kind of sense of bliss. And we call this, you know, this wholeness, this feeling of wholeness where we remember that we are nature and that we're not separate from it. It's like we live in our house with our walls and nature's out there and it's a place to be visited on a, on a bright, sunny day. But actually, you know, ancestrally, we lived in nature. You know, nature was our home. And there's a, a beautiful concept called biophilia, which talks about this, that um, at a cellular level, it's in our DNA. We, we remember that when we're, amongst the trees and sitting by a, a beautiful stream, you know, the sounds, the sights, the smells, the things that we can feel in our in our fingertips all take us back to that that memory that we have, that lost memory that, you know, nature is where we belong. And, you know, we so need that in our society today with how high pressured and busy it is. I agree. Totally. And I think that sort of getting trapped in the buildings and in the kind of space that we find ourselves living in. And yet the, the mind and the, our bodies just need that opposite. But I think something that really stood out for me with what you said, and it was right at the beginning, was for you when you were younger, you used to go out to the bottom of your field to be yourself. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that's something that is so important because we often aren't ourselves. I mean, one of my big things is following your own path, being your true self. It was something that's connected to my own story. I wasn't that when I was younger. And I think with nature, it accepts you just as you are. And mm. I think we need Absolutely. to really lean into that, don't we? Because we are all doing that comparatonitis. We're all worried about what everyone else is thinking, what everyone else is doing, you know, and I'm always trying to help people move away from that. But I think something that, yeah, is so important is that, that you can just go out and be, whether you're in a forest or by the sea or wherever you are, and be yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, we forget that we have a body, um, nature therapy, nature bathing, forest bathing, as it's it called, is, is an embodied practice. And sometimes I think we, you know, I often say to clients, um, how does something feel? And they go, well, I think that. And I say, take, try and take your head off, you know, that we, we, we sort of assume that, the, that we're this walking head and our brain is where all our intelligence lives. But our body has, uh, you know, an amazing uh, intelligence. We know that, don't we, when we know when something feels good for us. It, we have that visceral gut feeling. You know, our body gives us those messages. Um, but we're so busy in our head and so busy with the doing that we forget about being. And what's one of the things that is great about being in nature that, you know, if we have um, something to to solve, a problem to solve, or we're we're looking for clarity on something, or we're wanting to uh, reconnect with ourselves, you know, and, and ask ourselves the questions. Um, in nature, it just comes really easy because we're, you know, our, our heart, our wild heart. We all have a wild heart in there is open and it's ready to receive those messages. So nature really does speak to us if we we allow, the golden word is allow, um, and give ourselves the time that we need to uh, to drop into our body, to remember like the animal self and to open up our wild heart and to allow nature to speak to us um, in a way that, you know, our ancestors received that information so easily, um, but we're still capable of that. And I know I've heard people say, you know, they have their best ideas in the shower or in the bath, you know, um, because, again, we're, we're sort of taken out of our head, are we? We're feeling the water in the bath or the shower. 
Um, and it's no surprise that, you know, it unlocks that kind of creative side of ourselves, that kind of unconscious side that we're, we're always trying to seek out and mm. raise that awareness. I love that. And I think something I'm often talking about is getting out of your head. And I think this conversation mm. is the strategy. You know, people often say, you can't stop thinking. I can't stop the thoughts. They are going round and round. Yes, that is true. You know, that is the way that we're wired. But I think using nature and pausing and taking in whatever it is out there, and you can do it inside. Obviously, you can be more mindful. But I think just taking that as a, as a conscious strategy to get out of your head. You know, the minute you think you did chit, 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 that chit chat mm -hmm. in your head, mm -hmm. what is it that you can do? So tell us a few little tips that you use with your clients and yourself, no doubt, for getting out of your head and using nature. Yeah. So when you're in nature and you know, nature's everywhere, you know, nature is on the pavement outside. You can see a little uh, flower growing up in between the cracks in the pavement um so yeah i'd really encourage you to just you know go into your back garden step up out you know from your front door and just allow yourself to um you know awaken your senses so one of the things that i do on my forest bathing walks we do a beautiful 20 minute meditation called the pleasures of presence where we um open up all of our senses but you know we can do this and we're often taught this aren't we when we when we read about mindfulness so you know it's kind of giving ourselves that 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 time to just really tap into what we can see what we can hear what we can smell what we feel the air against our skin what we what we can touch and also what we can taste as well and and I often invite my participants to you know, breathe in through their mouth and suck up the air through the um through their lips as if they're sucking up the air through a straw. And it's amazing just like noticing the temperature change and how that air feels as it enters your body. Um and just to reconnect with those, you know, those kind of embodied parts of yourself that we, you know, when we're we're, as you said, so busy in our head we forget that, you know, we're there. And that will kind of connect you in with nature. And then the other thing that I, I love doing is, is doing what we call a sit spot um, invitation. So just invite you to sit in the same place and return to that same place often. So it's useful if that same place is, you know, in your back garden somewhere you can get to. And sit somewhere that you've never sat before. So it's so easy, isn't it, to sit where the chair is or the bench is in your in your place, your park or your or your woodland or your garden, but sit somewhere in your garden you've never sat before and allow yourself just to do nothing. And it's really, you know, tough at the beginning. Um, you know, you're, we're looking for our phone, aren't we? We're, we're kind of in our head. But just allow yourself to take a couple of deep breaths, drop into your body and just ask yourself, what am I noticing? What am I noticing? And it's so amazing just how you're you'll become connected to nature you'll start to just really focus on the tiny little creatures that are by your feet what's you know the birds that are flying around above your head the temperature of the air against your skin just allow those things to come and then actually you know if you have been sort of busy in your brain because you have been as i said before searching for some answers you'll find that they just land in, into your, mm. the part into your palm because you're open to receive. Lovely. So the sit spot invitation is lovely and dropping into your senses and into your body. I love that. I love the idea of just really consciously sitting, maybe like you say, what are you noticing in a different part, even if it's your own garden? But I think something that I think is quite interesting is even if you do have the same spot, different seasons notice different mm. things in the same spot. And I think, my, you know, that's something to be kind of mindful of as well, is that it's the same mm. view, but can look so different, can't it, in the different seasons? Yeah, absolutely. And one of our practices is reciprocity. So, you know, when we are kind of actively engaged in, in the practice of forest bathing, we're connecting with um, not two the other than human world so there's a real kind of philosophy that you know what you're looking at is also looking at you too that it's just not a one-way street that kind of 
as as a human species, we've kind of elevated ourselves uh, above the rest of nature. So, you know, my one of my sit spots in my garden is underneath a hazel tree, uh, which I call Harry. And, you know, this tree knows me um, and I know it, you know, and I have a relationship with this tree and I've climbed its branches and I've sat wailing underneath that tree and I've laughed under that tree. I've done journaling under that tree. You know, it it, it feels like a, a two-way relationship. Um, just as, you know, um, when you have a pet, you know, it's not just you getting something from your pet, you you know, you give and, and you receive in, in equal measures. Um, so anybody who's a dog or a cat lover knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's kind of reestablishing that kind of equal relationship with with nature. And when you care for nature, and um, we know this with a house plant, don't we? When you nurture that and you cut the dead leaves off, what you're doing is you're you're kind of nurturing yourself and caring for yourself too. Brilliant. And I think that takes us really nicely into sort of the self-love side of this episode, which I'd like to talk about. Mm. But I think the first thing that we can sort of remind ourselves that we've talked about so far is to be able to do self-love. We've got to get out of our heads because in Mm. our heads is all this chit chat. So the first part of our strategy that we're offering you today is to think about how you're going to get out of your head so that you can be present to yourself. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think this whole notion of being yourself sounds it almost sounds crazy that we have to work on being ourselves. And yet a lot of people do need to work on that. And one of my big things is how do we find ourselves? And then how is it okay for us to love ourselves? Because I do actually hear, and I don't know whether you do, Fleur, but I actually hear people saying that they think self-love is self-indulgent, is selfish, uh, mm-hmm. you know, is, and people get quite uncomfortable with it. And I think we've got to get rid of that for a start, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, taking time for yourself is selfish, and especially as, you know, women, we are so busy, you know, often, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to be stereotypical here, but, you know, certainly in my house, I do the lion's share of the cleaning and the jobs and, you know, keeping the family together and the Tesco shop. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's really hard to, kind of uh you know give yourself that time because there's always something else isn't there that to-do list is never done yeah. um so yeah it's it's the the golden word for me as I said before is I was talking about this just today in a workshop I was running is allowing you know it's allowing yourself it's giving yourself that permission to say do you know what it's okay for me to, to take this time out that I need and you know Often I, um, when I'm working with clients, we talk about what self-love is and there's the side of it, isn't there, which, um, you know, the media presents. So, you know, going, getting your nails done, having a massage, having a candle lit bath, all of those things are lovely and yet absolutely go and indulge in those things as well. And, you know, they're, they're, they're absolutely necessity. They're not a luxury, they're necessity. But self-love to me and what I work with my clients is about self-acceptance. And, um, you know, again, bringing nature into this, nature teaches us so much about self-love. You know, there's so much in in nature that isn't particularly beautiful. You know, at at this time of year, everything's dead. It's all mushy, it's mud. Um, but But it is what it is and it has a purpose and it's okay to to have both you know the the beautiful flowers and and um you know the, the not so nice to look at things and we've all got things that are not so nice to look at um certainly you know in my past life there's there's some things that I've done um uh, that I'm deep you know have been deeply ashamed of and, and really worked hard to forgive myself on but as I you know often talk to clients we often make decisions in the moment based on the information that we have at the time that's available to us with, you know, with our best interests at heart. And sometimes, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? And we can look back and go, oh, my God, what am I thinking? I hear so many times that I've done that in my life. 
but actually that's okay that was part of your journey and it's led you to where you are now and maybe those hardships and those challenges and those decisions that you made have led you to where you are and were, were a necessary part of, of the journey and um, you know, we can't always have the sunshine can we we have to have the rain yeah I mean I, I often talk about the, the your most sensational and I'm using that word quite purposefully your most sensational realizations and growth comes from the things that appear to not be working out so well but actually I think things happen for us not to us so even mm-hmm. the rubbish it happens for us to grow or to realize that you were doing something that wasn't good for you you know I think self-love mm-hmm. is being able to notice what you need to do more of what you need to do less of what you need to stop doing mm-hmm. altogether and what you need to start mm-hmm. doing and if people did a little check checklist of, of things particularly if it hasn't worked out you know if something hasn't worked out might be a relationship might be a friendship could be absolutely anything if it hasn't worked mm. out what is it that's that's at the heart of it and nine times out of ten in all my experience and I've written um, a couple of books that kind of are, are what I've experienced when it comes to this kind of thing usually at the root of all of challenges is that you haven't put yourself first or haven't looked mm-hmm. after yourself properly. Yeah, and you haven't had boundaries at the time. Yeah, absolutely. I I really, um, when I've reflected back on the relationships that haven't been healthy for me, you know, I've almost invited that in by being sort of subservient. And um, yeah, I had this concept, I think, from from you know kind of what was modeled to me from childhood that you know my job was to serve and that m- my happiness came you know was derived from making other people happy um and and then i was kind of sad when you, you know when when those relationships ended but actually you know what, when when my relationship ended with my first husband um, you know, one of the standing jokes in this relationship was we would walk into Tesco and he would say, do you want some flowers? And and I sort of like nudge him and say, oh, I just want you to buy me flowers. Like, for, you know, just because you love me, like just as a way of showing me you love me, not because we're walking past. Um, and I very rarely got flowers from him. So I'm, I, even though I was absolutely skint as a single mum, I made this pact with myself that, you know, once a month I would buy myself like a three quid, flat, you know, um, bunch of flowers. And, and if you ask any of my children what I would have on my gravestone, it would be here lies blur box or she bought her own flowers. <laughs> and even though I'm in a lo- lovely uh, relationship now and my guy does buy me flowers, you know, I still buy my own every month. Um, and I always say to my kids, like, you know, I'm buying my own flowers because I want my kids to really see that, you know, that this is an act of self-love and self-care mm-hmm. and that you don't need to wait for somebody else to do that for you. That you you are responsible for your own happiness and we don't, you know, make somebody else responsible and then get disappointed when they when they don't do that for us. That we we ha- we have to do that for ourselves first. We really do. And I think putting the responsibility on someone else. I mean, again, I learned this, you know, technically the hard way of expecting somebody else to make me feel happy or to do things that were going to make me feel happy. And actually, that's crazy because how can they know? Uh, and my, it is my job, as you said, to make sure that I look after myself. But for me, the root of all of this is as you said, self-acceptance, I think, is absolutely, you know, love all of the bits of you or look, look, at, look at life, look at yourself in a different light. Don't take yourself seriously, you know. And, and as you said, forgiveness, if there is something, self-forgiveness, if there is something that has happened in the past. But I think in that day-to-day, in that moment, it's those things, isn't it, that are just the smallest thing, like you say, a £3, if it brings you joy, by the, the flowers and that's what we're looking for but I, so many people are, their attention is on others waiting for somebody to make them feel happy waiting for something to happen that's going to make you feel happy and the reality then and certainly in my experience with for myself and others is that you are a waiting 
which in itself is a kind of challenge. But also, usually you are going to be miserable because it's not lighting you up because you're too busy focusing on what you think everybody else thinks you should be doing or what everyone else is doing. So you're not going to be happy. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like a, a bind, isn't it, mm-hmm. that people find themselves in? Yeah, and we're also putting our happiness on hold, aren't we? We're waiting for the, the right partner or the, the right man or the right woman to come into our life to make us happy or we're waiting until we get that new job or, you know, we can buy a new car or a, you know, a Michael Kors handbag or whatever it is, you know, we're, we're waiting. And it's like, you know, again, one of the things that I love about nature is it's reminding us that, um, you know, life's happening right now. Um, when we sit in nature's presence, things are happening in the moment. And this is really the, you know, our only given, isn't it? This is the place where we live right now. Um, you know, we we don't know. We might get run over by a bus tomorrow. <laughs> that sounds miserable, but it's true. You know, so actually, why put your happiness off um, and and live in, you know, live for today, live in the moment? And yeah, of course, it's important to have one eye on the future. But to allow yourself, again, that word allow, allow yourself to be happy today with, with who you are. Um, you know, you are unique and you are complete and you are not broken. And if there's parts of you that you don't like, you can work towards um, either changing that or accepting that about yourself. Um, but, yeah, life is short. So yeah, it's happening now. And you hear people say that, but then they don't really kind of do anything to make it different you know if you even if you were just projecting yourself for a week ahead you know what is it that you would like to look back on and say what did I manage for myself this week what's my little treat it doesn't like we say it doesn't have to be anything expensive necessarily but something that is for you know self-focused I mean I, I've launched this new um hoodie range that says that i love to stand up follow your heart for those that are watching um and oh, for great. Me, yeah and there's some candles and a mug and for me it's that it's that affirmation to self that says you know i'm i'm doing this and i'm doing it because it's the right thing i have other hoodies that have got in this on the sleeve i'm being myself or uh, i'm being me you know it's so important to to actually sometimes remind ourselves that it's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. For me, following your heart means that you are going to be tapping into a much more of who you really are and doing what brings you joy. And that doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean it's the same for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when we are in nature, like we said before, it's so easy to be yourself because nature is such a you know an unjudgmental place. There's nothing in nature ju- judging you. And so it's a great place to start being yourself, like showing up when you go and sit in, a, in, you know, in your garden or in a woodland. And, you, you know, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. You know, nobody is uh, judging you. There's no, nobody to compare yourself with. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really great place to just start to try this out, like, you know, to ask that question, who am I? And if, and what is it that about me that I love and what are the bits about me that, you know, I would like to change or I want to work on um, so that I can change that about me. And um, and everything in nature is a work in progress. Nothing is complete. Um, you know, and again, that reminds us that, you know, we're on a journey here, we're on a path and we're not going to, you know, be the finished end product um, you know, straight away that this is, you know, this is an ongoing process. And, you know, we we probably never get there, do we? We don't ever get to actualization and say, right, that's me. I'm done now. I'm, you know, because life happens and, and there's always something. But, um, yeah, it, you know, our life is, a, is, we're here and we have this one life. And it's so important to enjoy that journey. And, um, yeah, to, yeah. To, to love yourself in that way. I love that. And I think something else that's sort of springing to my mind when I think about some of the challenges that people face, worrying about what everyone else is thinking, taking themselves very seriously, not not tapping into that sort of child bit. And nature, as we've said, A, it'll allow you to do it, but what a great place to do it in as well. You know, go and stand at the top of a 
mountain and scream if you want or jump Mm -hmm. around and have some fun or go and jump in a puddle and allow yourself to do that so in a way that the things that I'm often talking to people about is is that just be be that inner child for a while and then and allow yourself to be and nature's waiting for us to go and do that because it's got the open space to scream or it's got the puddles to jump in so I think again it's Mm -hmm. for me it is that it's all out there for us. Just get out there and don't take yourself so seriously. Don't worry about what anyone else is thinking and go and do it in nature. Yeah. And nature can hold you and support you in with that too. You know, it's a very nurturing place. So when I work with clients outdoors, you know, they're often bringing big emotional things to to me to for us to work with. But nature is like my, you know, my, I see nature as my partner. You know, uh, when we're doing forest bathing sessions, we say in the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy that the forest is the therapist, the guide opens the doors. So, you know, it's great to, you can have fun in nature and, and absolutely, you know, that, that within it was all there is that child, isn't there? So, you know, I'm 51 and, all 51 versions of Fleur are, are within me, like the um, the dolls, you know, that, that stack inside one another. Um, and when we return to a, our younger self and we allow uh, the, little, the little you to play, we, you know, we return to that innocent child where, you know, uh, as we grow up, we're just covered in these many sort of, coats aren't we of conditioning uh, many layers of things that we've we've learned you know learned behavior to to you know deal with whatever life is throwing at us and in nature it's a great place to really take off those coats to strip back to strip that away and remember your authentic self so that's one of the things I love about nature you remember who you are Mm -hmm. and and who you're you're you know you're meant to be in this world and um yeah nature can can really support you um when you feel nature's love in doing that for yourself and really that's that is self-love isn't it you know like we said it's Mm. fine to go and book yourself in to have your nails done or whatever all part of the jigsaw but actually when people when i hear people say oh um, uh, my self-love is i've put my nails in i'm gonna have an early night great but actually it's not gonna do the thing that's missing if they really, really are feeling a bit burnt out or really super tired. There's more. Mm. And and I think that's where, you know, this episode hopefully is just going to help people pause and really think about where they are, where they are in relation to nature, but also where does that self-love come from? Allowing, I love the fact you use that as well. I use the word allowing and permission a lot. Give yourself permission to mm. just put shut mm. your laptop and go and have that time out or whatever it is that you need to do yeah so so important yeah and just what you only what you were saying there about you know recognizing that you're tired and to, and to think I needed an early night is great but we're being reactive to something so you know what I really advocate is to be proactive so you know if we make this nature connection or whatever it is for you you know whether that's meditation or yoga or, or whatever it is that you find as a way of really connecting to that sort of spiritual self and we make that part of our daily life then you know that then becomes a way of really helping with burnout and yeah. so that we don't end up in a place where we go oh gosh I'm so tired I need an early night but you know we're just not tired anymore because we've given and allowed ourselves those things every day um, and it's so easy to put that into your day. So one of the things I do, and again, another another sort of strategy for your listeners, when I come downstairs in the morning, I make myself my ginger tea, and I open the curtains and I open the double doors at the back of uh, the back of my house, and I just step into the garden, and I greet the day. It's a little practice called greet the day. And if it's raining, I don't go, oh God, it's raining, mm-hmm. miserable. I just go, oh, it's raining. I'm noticing it's raining. And I allow that rain to to greet me, to meet me where I am. So that's the other lovely thing about nature is it meets you where you are. And um, to try not to try not to put like your uh, version of what a good day is. If it's sunny, it's a good day. If it's wet, it's a bad day. But just notice and greet the day. And um, just those five minutes of, of standing there in the rain or 
you know, allowing that sunshine to hit your face or and noticing the birds or whatever it is that you're noticing. And then coming back indoors, it's like, ah, oh, right, I'm ready to start my day now. I love that. I love that. And of course, it's supporting this notion that we're trying to have time where we're out of our heads. You know, we, we are mm-hmm. going to be in our heads. That's kind of the way humans are wired. But having time where you're not stuck in your chit chat, especially if you have mm-hmm. got something that you're trying to solve. So I think that's really important. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So something that you and I are going to be at, which I think would be brilliant for you to share, what you're going to be doing mm. at Womanifest, Manifest, which is a empowering women festival in July this year. And you are going to be running some wonderful workshops there. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I did this uh, event last year run by the lovely Jodie. And um, yeah, so I, I'll be offering two things on two on the two different days. So I'm doing a forest uh, therapy session, a forest bathing session. So you can come and join me for 90 minutes. It's like a taster session. So we'll be doing the uh, senses meditation that I spoke about earlier, uh, dropping into our bodies, getting out of our head. And then I'll be offering um, participants some nature connection invitations um, in in the uh, woods there. So I'm really looking forward to that. Last year, absolutely lashed it down. And we were all giggling like kids because it was like biblical rain and we all got drenched, but it was such fun. Um, And the other thing that I'm doing is an Echinidra session. So I do do these monthly online and it's so lovely to do in-person sessions as well. So we'll be doing this inside one of the the beautiful yurts that that are there at at Womanly Fest. And Echinidra um, has the same, provides the same benefits of three to four hours worth of deep, deep sleep. Um, so it's, uh, you know, a beautiful, relaxing, guided meditation. So even if you need some meditation, all you have to do is listen to my voice. And people often fall asleep, which is welcome. Yeah. And um, yeah, and often it, it uh, leads to the best night's sleep ever afterwards. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely honoured and delighted to have been asked back to Woman Only Fest. And uh, I can't wait. So I yeah. hope to see you there. Yep, you'll definitely see me there. I'm going to be having mm-hmm. uh, doing a talk as well. Um, we'll put the Brilliant. link. We'll put the link for tickets because they are going out. They're out at the moment. There's some offers on at the mm-hmm. moment actually. So um, yep. our manifest is the sixth and seventh of July, and it's up here in the um, Frodsham area in the northwest for anyone who's interested. So we've also got beautiful bit of poetry in the show notes that Fleur has written, which is very kind of apt for this topic around self-love. And so tell us just a tiny bit about your poetry before we finish. Yeah. So I've been writing poem for poetry for a long time. I just love to write. Um, I've, I've kept a journal since I was 15 years old. Um, and uh, yeah, just these poems started flowing out of me over the summer, really. Um, but I've never actually published anything or started to put them online and, and I was encouraged to do that. Um, and one of the, you know, my kind of things that I want to change about myself a little bit and, and encourage myself to do, and again, messages that I've heard from nature is to is to be brave, you know, and be courageous. And I was 50 last year, so I thought, right, well, if not now, when? You know, like... <laughs> There might not be that many years left to do this when, you know, um, now's the time. So I've got an Instagram page uh, called Wild Heart Poetry. Um, and I've started to uh, put some of my poems out there. And I'm hoping to to get enough together to to publish a book. Um, and all the poems are kind of have that self-love theme. And they're nature, some of them are nature themed. Um, some of the one that you have... Um, you see sister is is a you know a kind of a self-love um one Uh, some of them are about some of the relationships that I've been in and um you know some of the pain that I've been through on my journey too and and really I'm I'm writing them to speak to people so that they can read them and then hopefully it might help somebody in some way to to recognize themselves in the poet in the poems and and uh, think yeah actually I I need to do that too 
Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us and having it in these show notes today. So I feel very honoured that we've got poetry that hasn't really been published yet and we've got it already here. (laughs) But I think that just want to end on that sort of a whole concept of wild heart. I feel there's a really... Set, I've got a really excited feeling about us focusing on self-love and attaching it to this wild heart that's within us all. And because for, for me, if we're wild feels exciting and I don't know, something really right, something right. I'm not quite sure. It's just kind of processing for myself right now. But I think just self-love and, and attaching it to your own wild heart. I think that's just mm-hmm. very exciting. Absolutely, yeah. And one of the things that I always say uh, in my meditations and to the people that I work with and on our weekend retreats is, you know, this heart, this wild heart that you have has been beating since the moment of your creation. It knows you. It, it was beating before you were even born. So, yeah, get to know your wild heart. Listen to it. Listen to it in nature. Put your hands over your wild heart. See what your wild heart wants for you. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's so much love for you. And if we can just receive that love, mm. how brave we can be in the world, knowing that we we are loved by nature, by um, all that is, every living, breathing thing in this in this world. And your own wild heart loves you. So, mm. so love, her love her back, that. love her back. I love that. I love that. And I feel like I've got my my hoodie on that says follow your heart. And it it kind of feels also right. Brilliant. Oh, thank Mm -hmm. you so much, Fleur. I know we're going to share all of your socials so people can follow you and watch out for what you're up to in the show notes. But thank you so much for your time today. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for listening and sharing in this episode of Mental Wealth. Remember, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast. My last question to you is what is the one small thing that you can take action on from this episode? Message me on Instagram or through our website with questions you'd like me to explore. You'll find the links in the show notes. I'll be back with more tools and tips to make sense of your mind in the next episode. In the meantime, be kind to yourself. Bye for now. Thank you.